Good morning, Huntington Chapel. To those who are joining online, welcome. This is the first rainy Sunday in a while. And I'm glad you're all here. That means you're ready. It's hard to fight that urge to sleep in on a rainy day. But I thank God that the spirit in me didn't want to sleep today. I want to be with my daddy. I want to be with my brothers and my sisters. That together we would bring an expression of love that we have received from the hand of the Almighty God. This week, during Bible study, and I encourage you, come, have some fun. Get to know your, your daddy through his word. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on the way he met an Ethiopian, a eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from him, from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. Please rise as we stand and give praise to our God. Father, we thank you. Because you make all things known to us through your word. That your people would not be deceived. But that they would know the way of love because you showed us through your son Jesus. 
Father, we thank you for Jesus. We also thank you for the spirit that you left to counsel us and to show us. We thank you, Father. We ask that you would fill this house with all of your goodness. With all of your fullness, we thank you, God, because you are able and willing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. exalt him today. Let's just lift him up. Let's just tell him how great he is and how amazing he is. Because even when we can't see it, he's working. Even when we can't feel it, he's working. He promises in Romans 8, 28 to work all things together for our good. So we have a reason to open our mouth and praise him no matter what's going on.
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul.
your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay in my head I will sing of the goodness of God
Let us stay right there. Yet again, in that vein, let's not move from that place right there. That can only be declared if you have had an experience with the living God. I want you just to take a moment to reflect on that moment when your Savior came and touched your heart. A circumstance that maybe was too big for you and you thought it was going to be that very thing to take you out, but he rescued you. Or maybe that sin you committed that you just knew there was no way you were coming back from it, but yet he forgave you and loved you despite of... God, for that reason and that reason alone, we declare that we love you. Brittany, if we can sing that just one more time. out of my belly belongs to you. 
the direction of my footsteps belong to you. And the decisions that I make belong to you. For God, we no longer live for ourselves, but we live for the one who died for us. And for that death, we stand here that we may live through him for all eternity, through him and with him, and by him and for him, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Take this moment to love upon the person next to you. If you don't know somebody, get to know them. For we are spending all eternity together. Hallelujah. While we're doing this, let us uh, dismiss children for a children's church and our beautiful babies to the nursery. Amen. all of you who serve in that ministry pouring into the next generation. Amen. Praise God. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. So just a few quick announcements. Um, Chills and Stones Young Adult Ministry will be here uh, this Tuesday in Kellogg's Hall. Yeah, amen. We'll be meeting in Kellogg's Hall um, because there's some, well, we'll get to that. And tomorrow, the youth ministry is going to be going to Brownstone Park. Amen. Wow. And now, I'm going to turn it over to our property and finance team. Come on up. See, this is the property and finance team, and um, there are some seasons we're always working. You guys might not always see it. There are some seasons where some of the forward progress takes a little bit more difficulty. So there are some seasons where it's slower, and there are other seasons where it's suddenly facilitated. And I believe right now we're entering a season, and I believe that's because of things God wants to do, but I believe that we're entering a season right now of facilitated movement. And without stealing Rob's thunder, because he's our treasure, and so he'll be presenting something to you guys today, I just wanted to say that we're, we're entering that season now. And I wanted to remind you guys 
If you remember two years ago, we kind of presented a little bit of a big picture of some of the things that we want to do. We're, we're saying we're believing that God wants to move. Do you guys still believe that God wants to move? Amen. And, Amen. and even more so now than two years ago, God is priming the pump for our nation. Something is going on and he's preparing people's hearts. So we want to be ready for that. And if you remember, when I made that announcement two years ago, we talked about certain things and certain finances and projects we were working on. And I said, who knows that maybe some of the provision has already been made. And little did I know when I made that announcement, you guys are witnesses to this, that was the same weekend that we got a, a call from one of our neighbors wanting to do something with part of our property. So we sold a part of our property and got $10,000. The provision was already there. And again, as again, I don't want to steal his thunder over here. He is going to present some changes that we've been working on and that we're soon to be implementing. So I will pass the mic off to Rob. One, one, you can pass it off one other one person first, though. We, we have installed him at a business meeting, but we have not installed Rob as our treasurer in the service. So we just, in front of all of you, and also, Rob, I want to thank you for your heart for God. I want to thank you for your heart of, of, of wanting things in order and being able to dot every I and cross every T, which can be a, a difficult thing. <laughs> but, but I praise God for sending you to us many years ago at a breakfast and how God captured your heart and he's continuing to capture it and how you continue, I don't know how he's using now. Give, he has prepared you for such a time as this. So everyone just put a hand of blessing upon, uh, toward, toward uh, Rob. Lord God, we anoint him with the oil of your love and authority. I thank you for the way that he sees numbers. I thank you for the way that he understands numbers. And Lord, how to to move and how to be efficient and how to be a blessing. And Lord God, we just thank you, Lord, and we install him and we bless him. And Lord, we strengthen him, we honor him. Lord, equip him in this season. And Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for, Lord, just more than just the understanding of numbers, but the understanding of of, of flow of, of order and Lord God we just thank you for such a time and Lord we thank you for the coming and Lord how you are moving here Lord God how we thank you for your presence and Lord we thank you that we have the opportunity to bless you now before every knee bows and, 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 and oh Lord God and every tongue confess but Lord we just rejoice in doing that now and Lord we just come and we thank you for your servant Rob we thank you for his family bless him give him understanding of time management Lord I, I pray the enemy that you give him wisdom beyond all understanding that the enemy would not be over to overwhelm him or discourage him but Lord he, he would continue to find his strength in you and Lord and, uh, and that you would move through him in Jesus name we pray amen thank you pastor so when God kind of put this on my heart through pastor I said God what are you doing to me I don't have any more time how am I gonna squeeze one more thing in and he said but wait a minute I gave you a gift and it isn't being official with money I made you cheap I made you really cheap and, and, it, and as I spoke to him he says he, everybody on this committee has a gift I can't do what anyone else does in here Everybody has a, a, a very unique gift, and it's the combination of those gifts. And as I'm, I'm back here and I'm, I'm praying, I said, God, what am I going to say when I go up there? Because I don't usually prepare when I'm going to speak in front of people. And God said, you know what? Tell them I'm a stockbroker. Stockbroker. He says, yeah, you th investments, right? We're talking about investments. He says, you diversify. We diversify, right? We got, we got a bunch of different talents. He says, everyone I've made unique and individual. And I want to see them grow. I want to see this house grow. And something is happening here. Jason, when Jason says it, you know, it's like, eh, it's, it's in passing. There's a lot of things happening here. 
but then, uh, you know, as I've started to grow into the, the financial pieces, I'm like, wow, Jason's right. There's, there's, there's something happening. Um, so, so let's talk about things that are happening. <laughs> Um, so one, one kind of cool thing, we'll, we'll start kind of at the small stuff, I guess you could say, not to Jason, it's a big thing. We've kind of replaced our church management software, which was pretty ancient, and Laura will tell you it was very complicated. Um, and, you know, we're going to have all, all these cool abilities to kind of manage our ministries and commute to, communicate to everybody. We'll have like a QR code for people to donate. You don't have to write a check anymore, potentially. Um, so that's happening. Uh, it's going to make Jason's job a lot easier, and, and really everybody on the property and finance committee will be able to see a lot more reports and, and kind of manage our finances the way God guides us. Um, the next big thing uh, is our carpet. So it is next week, if I remember correctly. Uh, we are getting new carpet Monday. Okay, that's even faster than I thought. So there is new, new carpet being installed uh, that's going to have a lot more padding in it and just kind of refresh our house. Um, you could dance harder. Dance ministry wanted that. <laughs> that yeah, you talk about kneeling longer we'll get to that but you know god hears our prayers and he hears you now saying boy my tush kind of hurts and and you know so we're talking about padding here you know the other thing i want to before i get on to why your tush hurts um we are working on the siding on the outside of the building so we've been able to uh, put a deposit down and we're going to finish the siding on the outside of the building and again god has kind of guided us there and say where do we spend our money Right, so there's that little leak back there, and there's you know, squirrels living over there, and you know he he guided us to say, you know what, fix the outside, and that'll stop all the other problems. So we're gonna get new siding. The place is gonna look great from the outside. It's gonna look great on the inside. So let's get to our let's get to our uh, our tushes. So I'll I'll, I'll be your uh, I'll be your Vanna White, but there's a lot of padding in here, and and he wants you to stay longer. He wants you to be comfortable. He doesn't want you to be distracted. So one of the things, you know, these are great chairs. And Al, you know, again, great talents I don't have. He kind of outlined here all the nice little parts about the chair, how wide they are, uh, how much foam. That's a lot of foam. Uh, they're roomier. They got durable fabric. They have a fabric treatment. So when my kids spill something on it, it won't stain it. Um, but there's, you know, listen, again, we, we've kind of invested our money in different areas. And we, we are presenting to you today the opportunity to invest further in our church. So we have our tithe. One thing we are asking, and, and this is an investment, and everybody has different means, and there's different ways that God answers our prayers for our finances. And Jason will go into that a little bit further, but we are looking for help in paying for the chairs. And we've kind of already said, we can do this. We can do this. And we're just like with the property, God has his way of figuring it out. Uh, but we're going to ask that um, we do a separate potential donation. in could be in lump sum, could be in increments uh, for our building fund to help contribute to the chairs. Uh, it would be separate from a tithe. And we would ask you that, and Jason will send this all out, as he always does very clearly. But we'd ask that you kind of segregate it out. Uh, uh, that it is for the building fund and for the chairs. But we are going to be putting this little temperature gauge outside so we can kind of see. The goal is about 100 to 150 per chair, you know, roundabout. And again, everybody can give within their means or seek out people to help contribute for that. Um, but we really want to continue to grow this house. And, you know, as I look today, and, and I got here first because I needed to. <laughs> so I ran out of the house, and as I'm sitting there, I'm like, wow, we're... we're Where's my family going to sit? It's getting pretty full in here. And to me, that speaks to what this house has become. It is filling up. I see new faces. I constantly see new faces. I love it. I love it. I was a new face. <laughs> and if it wasn't for the, 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 the rainy a day, just like today, actually, a rainy Easter egg hunt, which, again, who I said to myself, God, what, why are we going to an Easter egg hunt in the pouring rain? But he sent us here. And we, we haven't left. Um, so it is little things that this house does that brings the community in, and we want to continue to do that. Um, so I'm going to pass it off to Jason. He's going to talk a little bit more about our chairs and, and just the, kind of the whole process. But thank you. I ask you to pray for me. Um, I ask you to pray for our entire team uh, to, to, again, give us the guidance we need to, to do what God wants us to do.
Ah, okay, get more in the light. Yeah, here we go. Be spotlight over here. So I just wanted to, um, this is our opportunity to let you guys participate in what God is doing. Um, because though we're talking about seats and we're talking about carpet, ultimately we're not talking about the furniture of this place. We're talking about the people that we believe God is going to bring here. Amen. So we want to encourage everyone to see this as an investment to maybe those that you have been praying for for many years. I know many of you guys, it's in your heart for certain people who don't know the Lord. Together, we want to be a place that could be accommodating for that. So yes, we're going to change out the carpet. We're going to change out the, the chairs. And so we have a little slip here where you guys can make commitments. We want to start getting these. We're not going to give these out to you guys this week because we want you guys to have time to consider it, to pray over it. But I want to go through a few of the categories. So it would just be I, you put your name or your family's name, make the following commitments. And again, it's not just about money. It's not just about chairs, but it's this. It says, I agree to pray regularly for the next however many months, you could fill that in, for God to fill the seats with people whose lives God seeks to touch. We're not investing in chairs and carpet. We're investing in the lives that we believe God wants to bring here, and we want to be ready for that. So I want to encourage you guys, you know, to, to click to check on that. And obviously, we should be doing this all along, but this is a specific commitment. I don't want you guys to do this lightheartedly. Like, literally, ask God, say, God, I want to make a commitment. How long should this commitment be for? And, and check that out. The next category is it says, I pledge to contribute the price of one, two, three, four, five, or six investments. We've called these investments here because we could call these seats, but these are more than seats. These are investments in people's lives. So we kind of broke it down to about like 100, 115 over here to be able to fully fund the carpet, the chairs. And so what I want to do is ask you guys, you know, if you're a family of four, maybe you'll cover for four. Some people we understand have different means. Some people can cover all of it. Some people could cover more. Some people could cover less, but that is okay. You know, whatever God puts on your heart, if you want to break it down in terms of, we're calling these investments, they're, they're $150 per investment. You could, you know, you circle the category for investments. Maybe you're a family of four. Maybe you're praying for God to bring two specific other people. So you'll cover six, whatever it may be. Or there's a, just an opportunity to just, just put a cash value, whatever it is. God sees your heart. But more than that, there's also other opportunities for us. Obviously, we could be praying, we could be giving, but also I believe sometimes God has given us connections with other people. I know sometimes there have been people who've been looking for places to give money. Maybe in your work or in your family, there's people looking for something to invest in. So there's a category that says, I pledge to seek out willing donors who may be willing to contribute towards this. So maybe that's me. Maybe that's you. Maybe you can't give a dime. Maybe you're right now fully strapped and you just can't. God sees that. God sees whatever you could give. But maybe you have a connection. Feel free to check out that box. So we're going to have these pledge slips um, out next week so that as the plate comes around, you guys could do that. I'm going to send these out in the email to everyone's email. And if you're not on our email list, feel free to contact me so that I could get you on our church email. Um, but we just want to encourage you guys together. Let's together do this. I mean, imagine this, where this place is fully carpeted. It's not just carpet. There's actual, there's going to be padding on it too. So, I, I, this, and actually, this was prompted by the, the worship team because they were starting to feel it a little bit. And some of you guys might feel it, or if you're kneeling, you guys might feel it. Well, we're going to have a bit of a padding here, and we're going to have chairs. The color is going to be a little different. It'll look like that style, but it'll have this color here. Um, but again, this is way more than the, the carpet. This is way more than the chairs. It's about the lives that God wants to touch. So we want to encourage you guys, not just consider this, but consider those who God wants to speak to in your lives, and let's be praying for that. You know, I should add that category to you. I'm going to add that category before I put that out, that you'll be praying for individuals to fill these seats because we know God wants to touch people's lives. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Dear the Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the resources that you have given to us. We acknowledge, Lord, that our money is not our money. It's yours. Lord, guide us in how you want us to use your funds. And Lord, that we pray, Lord, that you, I thank you, Lord, that you want to use us to build a kingdom for your son. Oh, Lord, that is worthy of him. Oh, Lord God, we need your help. Be with us and guide us, oh, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. And just one more quick thing as a reminder. Since the carpet is actually going to be installed tomorrow, at the end of the service, we're going to ask everyone to um, help us bring the chairs out. And if there's other stuff around flags and stuff, if you guys can help us with that. Not, not the worship equipment, but at the end of the service, if you could help us with that, we'd greatly appreciate it. We're going to go out in Kellogg Hall on the wall over there. So we'll, we'll direct you guys, but if you could pull out a few chairs, we'll direct you at that point. One more, annou- one more announcement. Uh, all you nice men out there, we're going to have a uh, end of the year party at my house. Hamburgs, hot dogs, uh, cornhole games, and uh, I, have a nice, I have a nice swimming pool. It's not much good with nobody in it, so... You guys come out. We're going to go swimming for a while and then have some fun and prayer and so forth. All right? Tuesday night, 6, six o'clock. This Tuesday. Amen. And let's just give it up real quick for our property and finance team and their service. Amen. And also, uh, the Sunday ministry leader training. Uh, that, that was canceled. It was actually rescheduled. The date will be September 28th. All right. So that is the this, this Sunday ministry leadership training. Those who serve on Sunday, the leadership training will be on September 28th. Amen. Let us give. Father, we thank you yet again for your generosity and the generosity of your people. God, we thank you for the vision. And we thank you for the hearts of those who are serving to make sure that vision comes to pass. Lord, we ask you to continue to help us to dream big and to think outside of the box and not, never to put you in a box. And Father, we thank you again for your faithfulness. You never fail us, and you never let us down, and we give you glory for that in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Lord, we ask you this morning to have your way. As you speak this morning through your servant, I pray that every heart under the sound of my voice will be open. Every mind will be in the position to receive and that your word will not return unto you void. Bless this, your servant. Bless this, your people. And may the body of Christ at the Huntington Chapel, those who are here in person, those who are online, and those who are watching from around the world, literally, may they be blessed and highly favored and edified in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. You know, and I love that God loves me just the way I am. 
But do I want to come to him just the way that I am? See, these, this is part of my work clothes. I, I, I like this. It, I've worked with it enough. It, it knows my moves. It's comfortable for me. I, I am at home in this thing. And, and it's, it's okay. I, I don't care if it gets dirty. I don't care. It, it's just, it's, it's, and it's, it's comfortable. But I don't understand why, why my wife doesn't want me to wear it when we go out. Can someone please talk to her? Can someone please talk to her? Or she doesn't want me to wear it, you know, when, 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 I, when I come to bed. She doesn't want me to wear it. And, and she, there's a place that she wants me that it's okay. It's okay if I wear it. But there's many other places it's not okay for me to wear it. I just want to prove her wrong because I could wear it here, okay, because God loves me. And here's where we want to, I want to look at God's word because we've been following this whole theme of following the way of love. And it is powerful. We need to, to understand the love of God, the love that he has for us. His love, and, and guys, I, I pray that you felt it this morning. And I also love how, again, in how God works through worship. Because one of the songs we're, we sang about how Jesus clothes himself in light. I'll be honest with you, I'm not big on fashion. There's a lot of times my wife will look at me, she goes, you're leaving, you're getting, having out of the house looking like that? She goes, you can't wear a plaid shirt and, and a plaid jacket. It, it, uh, you can't do that. I, I didn't know that. There's some things I, I, I didn't know that some colors don't go with other colors. But I praise God. God's blessed me with someone who has fashion sense because I don't. And, the, and, I, and, I, and I need to understand, hey, where her strength is and mine. But, it, but she loves me enough to, to tell me, hey, you know, you can do it. But... It's not going to go well for you. <laughs> and, here's, and I praise God because she does that in love. And here my message for you today is this. God has a new wardrobe of love just for you. You need to understand how much Jesus loves you. And he has garments that he wants to give to you. But you have to be ready to receive them. We receive them in, in a way that honors him. We receive him more than receiving the clothes. And I love even the whole idea of wardrobe. Because the first word in there is war. How many times do you wake up in the morning realizing you're heading into a fight? How often do you realize, do, do, you, do you know that? I, I love, in, in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, Paul writes, the God of this age. Not, he's not talking about our Heavenly Father. This is the lowercase g. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. There is a God of this world, and he's not our God. This is Lucifer. Jesus refers to him as the prince of this world. Jesus talks to the Pharisees, and he says, You are of your father, the devil. What do you mean? Uh, uh, Abraham's our father. No, you are your father, and when you speak, you speak his language. Guys, we got to realize. See, sometimes what the enemy wants us to do is to get so comfortable just the way we are. It's okay. God understands. God understands. Hey, I'm not as bad as, as this person. I'm not bad as that person. I'm not bad. You know what? God doesn't compare you to me. He doesn't compare you to the person on your right, the person on your left, the person behind your person. He compares you to his son, Jesus Christ. That's why he sent his son to pay the price, to give you the Holy Spirit, 
to empower you to transform, to be greater than the sum of your parts by adding to that sum the infinite power and authority of God. And I love this because, see, we need to understand that there is a battle going on for us. There's also a, a battle, in, in, and I love this in Ephesians 6.12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Guys, there are ground demons, and there are heavenly demons. And they have a strategy. They have a scheme to trip you up. In fact, I believe some of the demons that are chasing after you have been chasing after your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, and your great-great-grandfather. They know you. They have been on this earth ever since Satan fell. And they have a scheme. And they know how to play your feelings. So you make decisions based on how you feel rather than what you know. But here where I praise the Lord, I, I, Jesus felt things more deeply than anyone else has ever felt, but he was never led by his feelings. He was led by the truth. He was led by the knowledge of his Father. So here as we, we come in, I want, just want to look at Colossians chapter 3, because we're talking about the way of love. All right? And this is so, I love this passage. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Wait a minute. But I received Jesus. The Holy Spirit should set my heart. The Holy Spirit should set my mind. No. You're the one that has a controller. You're the one that has the controller. What are you going to set your heart to? What are you going to set your mind to? What is the world going to try to, to bring into your life to get you distracted from Christ? The whole, the whole political landscape. Wow, we got, I got into a political argument. I said, guys, I said, not for nothing. The problem isn't between Democrats and Republicans or liberals and, and conservatives. The issue is a family. The biggest problem in our country is, the is how the family has broken down. Children are not being raised with fathers who have strong identity. And a father gives identity. One of the greatest things that I shared about the last verse of the Old Testament, which talks about that if, if mankind does not come back to the, this, this, uh, the spirit of, of uh, Elijah and the hearts of the fathers turn back to their children and the children to their fathers, see, but it's the fathers first who will then inspire the children, a curse will be upon the land. And that's what we're seeing right now is a curse. So don't fall to the debate of liberal or Democrat. You need to point it back to Christ. We need to get back to our moral truth, to our Judeo-Christian ethic as a country. But let's go on. When Christ, who is your life, how many people know that Christ is your life? How many? Guys, see, when we read scripture, we need to be listening. What is the Holy Spirit talking to me? How many people know that Christ is your life? Well, he's my life on Sunday. He's my life on Tuesday night when I come to Chosen Stones. He's my life when I go to this event. But these other times, uh, they're mine. No, no, no. See, the, one of the problems we have with the religious spirit is this is my sacred life, this is my secular life. No, no, no. Everything is sacred. Everything. When you go to the grocery store, when you're driving down the road, when you, where, wherever you are, there's an opportunity. There, God may have a divine appointment for you. And if your life is not hidden in Christ, if he is not your life, you're not going to hear it. You're going to miss it. 
When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Guys, we're but a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Let's keep reading. So Paul continues, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to the earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Guys, you have no idea how terrifying the wrath of God is going to be. I have experienced his holiness, and his holiness brought such terror into my being. I can't begin to, and now, now this holy God being, having, pouring out his wrath, oh, wow, I couldn't handle that. And I praise God because he gave me a way out of that. But, but he, he's saying, he's not saying, I'm going to put to death. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to put this to death. Well, let me ask you this question. How do you put something to death? Real simple. Stop feeding it. Starve it to death. If you don't use it, you will lose it. Stop feeding it. Stop giving it territory in your mind. Stop allowing your mind answers to you. Your heart answers to you. Who do you answer to? I want to answer to Jesus. Put to death, therefore, what belongs to your earthly nature. Again, all these things that we want, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. Let me ask you a question. Since you've been a Christian, who has seen the transformation in the way that you now live? Who has seen the transformation? Who is coming up to you and saying, wow, what is it with you? What is it with you? Man, you're not coming out anymore without, and to the parties. You're not, man, you're not cursing anymore. You're not doing this. Anymore. Man, you're, you always seem to be at peace. You're, what is going on with you? Is there a difference? If there isn't a difference, you might want to look at what you're wearing. But now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Wow. Put to death. Get rid of. You know, sometimes I'll, I'll take it off, but I'm not going to get rid of it. <laughs> I, I, I like it. I, I, may, I may need it someday. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge, in the image of its creator. Guys, here's what... <laughs> A lot of times we do. Okay, God has a new garment of righteousness for me. Let me put this on. Let me put this on. Okay, yeah. Looks good, right? It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. See, that's where in Galatians it says they're opposed to each other so that you do not do what you want. See, I'm trying to live in both worlds. I'm trying to put on a mask. I want you to, oh, look how righteous I am. And then when I get to leave, okay, all right, well, let's take this off. We need to learn how to take it off, how to... Get rid of the clothes, the garments that the God of this world has given us. And he can only give you his garments because we agree with him. He can't force his garments on you. He dangles them 
in front of you. He dangles them. But here's the thing. If I'm really in Christ, I should be looking and sounding more like him every new day. Every new day. I need to be growing in my knowledge of him. I need to grow in my relationship with him, spending time with him, not because I have to, but because I'm compelled to, because there's nothing on this earth like him. And I love this. So why should we do this? Come on, God, you understand that no one's perfect. Because he's not asking for perfection. How we're doing this? He wants to know, do we love him? I love in 2 Corinthians 5, 14, for Christ's love compels us. It compels me. His love for me compels me to live in such a way. You see, because I want to, if I really love him, I'm going to love what he loves and I'm going to hate what he hates. If I really love my wife, and my wife doesn't like cigar smoke, but hey, tough, honey, I love a cigar, and I just keep puffing away, would you say that I love my wife? Not as much as I think I do, because I love the cigar more than God. This whole idea, what idols are we bowing down and worshiping to? Just look at your clothes. Just look at, see, because clean hands, those who, in, in Psalm 24, those who climb the holy hill of the Lord, clean hands and a pure heart. Thank you, God. I love also, and, and here we're, I love in John 15, this is Jesus speaking, as the Father has loved me, Listen, just listen to this. As a father has loved Jesus, so Jesus has loved you with an intensity that we cannot even begin to comprehend. Now remain in my love. How do we do that? If you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I have obeyed my Father's commandments and remained in his love, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Wow. But here it is. And I love, I love James. James chapter 4. Because again, I like this. This, this as a, a type of comfort, I'm familiar with it. I mean, I, I, it, it's, it, it, I, I, it moves, it knows me. But it's what God has for me. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Come near to God, he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning, your joy to gloom. Really? God wants me to mourn and to be gloomy, to be... No, he does. He, he just, we just read, he wants us to know the fullness of his joy. But when I look at how I have sinned against him... See, you don't have to commit great sin to know that you're a great sinner. Every sin hurts him. When I have discord with someone, it hurts him. When I look at someone in the wrong way, it hurts him. When I have an outburst of anger, it hurts him. If I love him, how can I keep hurting him? This is where I need to submit to God. See, many people say, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry, but they keep walking the same way. They're not changing the direction. 
We need to repent. We need to submit to God. Resist the devil because he is going to be on you, man. I'm going to tell you, when you submit to God, the devil is going to be on you. Don't worry about the devil. He's got nothing on you. He's a con artist. And you know what? As soon as you buy his con, he's going to be before the Father and say, Ah, look what he's doing. Look what Doug is doing. Look, look, look. He's not only a con artist, he's a snitch. And then he'll, he'll do that to God, and then he'll come and whisper in your, how can you do this? Look what you've done. Look at this. Look at what you've done. How many times has the enemy brought something to your mind that just like, I, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did that. Why? Because you're still wearing it. See, the things that brought us joy, the things that bring the, the world joy, which breaks the heart of our Father and our Savior. And we participated in. That's where we need to change our laughter and our joy into, into mourning, into gloom. Because I realized I was deceived. And I put on something I shouldn't have put on. Humble yourself before the Lord. And he will lift you up. I also love in Ezekiel 14.6. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Repent, turn from your idols, and renounce all your detestable practices. See, guys, God has some new garments for you. You can't provide them for yourself. But before you can receive them, you have to take off. Sometimes it's work. Because it doesn't want to come off. You have to take it off. Then you have to get rid of it. You repent. And you say, Father, I am so sorry for the way that I wounded you. I am so sorry for buying the lie that I thought was going to heal my soul, but it just brought more pain to my soul. Oh, Father, I am so sorry. Forgive me, oh God. And then I tell that sin, get away from me. I have been forgiven. I have been redeemed. You are no longer invited into my life. Get out of my life. I belong to Jesus. He is mine and I am his. There's no room for you. And then what the father is going to do? He's going to give you garments of righteousness. And guys, his garments of righteousness... His garments of righteousness is to set you apart. So all the world has to do is look at you. Now there's something different about you. It's how you carry yourself. It's how he carries you. It's how you set your mind to him, your heart to him. How you've been crucified with Christ. You no longer live, but Christ lives in you. And he has brought you to the fullness of his joy. Some of you are here today. And you got some dirty clothes. And you like them. And you're, they're comfortable for you. Because they're always there when you, whenever you need them. Whenever you feel alone. They are there. But they've never kept their promise. 
They've only made the pain worse. This is where we need to repent. We need to come before God. We need to change our laughter into mourning, our joy into gloom. We need to put on, therefore, as God's, going back to Colossians 3, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievance you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There is a, a poem that I, I love. It's uh, from an elementary school teacher. I'm talking about a student at the end of the day. He came to my desk with a quivering lip. The lesson was done. Have you a new sheet for me, dear teacher? I have spoiled this one. I took his sheet all soiled and spotted and gave him a new one all unblotted. And into his tired heart I cried, do better now, my child. Do better now. I went to the throne with a trembling heart. The day was done. Have you a new day for me, dear master? I've spoiled this one. He took my day, all soiled and, and blotted, and gave me a new one, all unspotted. And into my tired heart he cried, Do better now, my child. Do better now. You need to take authority because God has given you authority. In Matthew 28, Jesus says, all authority has been given to me in this age and the age to come. And where does he reside? In you. If you're his believer, if you're his, he's in you. That authority is in you to tell whatever and to repent. We first need to repent. So you can't tell something to get out if you're not sorry. If you haven't understood why the offense is where it is. In closing, there's a show, this shofar, and there's another one over there. That one is more for high praise. This one is for repentance. I'm going to just pray. I want the Holy Spirit to lead you. Is there something that God is calling you to take off? Is there something that God is calling you to put to death? It's been alive in your life for too long. Is there something that God is telling you to get rid of? You need to come before God and repent. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit brings you to the thing that breaks his heart the most with you. And that you don't worry about doing it on, because he'll do it with you. But you got to do it. You got to set your heart, set your mind. I'm going to blow this shofar. And I welcome you. Come kneel before the altar of God. Come kneel before his altar. Say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for wounding you. I'm sorry that in my pain, I believed the lie. Please forgive me. I'm taking off these clothes. I'm taking a... I'm using the authority that you have given me, that you are in me, and I am in you. I'm setting my heart to you. I'm setting my mind to you. See, because if you, then he's going to get, then you need to be ready to receive the new clothes. Because if you just take off the old clothes and you don't put the new on, it's just a matter of time before you put the old ones back on. You got to put on the new ones. 
going to give you a couple of seconds to pray and then get ready. Be obedient to what the Holy Spirit's telling you. He loves you. He wants to set you free from the burden of that sin. He wants to set you free from the burden of the guilt and the shame. He wants you to know the fullness of joy. In the 
Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ of We receive this message of love because this is love. When our Father gives us another day to do it better than the way we did it the day before. Chapel, this is a new season. And he is coming back for a spotless bride. And now it is time to prepare our hearts for the coming of the king. So receive what thus saith the Lord. Because we can't go where he's taking us the same way. We must take off this thing that needs to come off and put on what needs to be put on to go where God is taking us. That's to the next level of glory. So with that being said, Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for yet again being faithful and loving us despite of us 
thank you. Now, Holy Spirit, we ask you to remind us tomorrow morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning and Thursday morning and Friday morning that we are wearing a new garment. And may it be filled with hope. And may you then use us to help others put on a new garment. So God, we thank you. And we honor you in Jesus' name. You, you chosen stone, rejected by man, but received by God. Go out into all the world and let the world know that Jesus is Lord and do it with your life. Walk in power, walk in love, and walk with integrity. God bless you. Have a great week. Grab a chair and bring it that way. Thank you.